Good morning, this is uh, Jurin speaking. We have Azar asking from uh, Mozilla Labs who is uh, with us today. Um, Azar, conversational computing seems to be the next big thing. Can you give us, let's say, your pitch about conversational computing? Sure. So right now, let's take a very simple example. If you want to translate some text on a page, what do you have to do? You have to first copy that text, then so select it, copy it, go to a Google search, mm -hmm. search for for whatever it is you're looking for, in this case a translation service, click on that, go there, paste in your text, select the language you want to choose, translate it, and then close the tab and try desperately to remember what it is you're trying to do in the first place. Right? That's a sort of standard web-based model. With mm -hmm. conversational computing, it's much more Star Trek interface. You literally say, translate this, or translate this into English, translate this into Dutch, so translate this into Portuguese. A click-free world? In some ways. Like, it's not independent of clicking, you can certainly always have a mouse-based interface. But the idea is that it's a little bit more human, a little bit more personable, so that I can just tell my computer what I want it to do, and it does it for me. So you can imagine with search technology right now, mm -hmm. Yahoo, Google, Bing, whatever, you type what you want to find, just imagine now you type what you want to do. Great. And now, how does this all relate to the semantic web and the learning web? Because it seems like it's not competing with each other, but it's in the same, it's going to the same learning web. So, what I like to say is that saying the semantic web mm -hmm. is exactly the same thing as saying it isn't going to happen. Um, we've been okay. promised the semantic web for a very long time. And the big problem with the semantic web is that nobody ever has, has ever stopped to look at what are the use cases behind the semantic web, right? We know that there's a whole bunch of great information out there, but you have to be able to do something with it. Um, and the semantic web isn't going to take off until people find value in semantically marking up their porn, right? As soon as we get that, then we have a use case. So we like to think about in terms of conversational computing, mm -hmm. is that this is the very first use case of, of the sort of semantic web, because if it knows that something's an, something's an address, mm -hmm. you can map it. If you know that something's an email address, you can send somebody an email. If you know it's a person, well now you can go talk to them on, on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, whatever other mechanism you want. Yep. So really, we think of the semantic web as that fundamental substrate um, which lets you build really interesting use cases, yep. but we're not going to wait for that semantic web um, and the learning web. We're going to start with the use cases and then get everybody else to add that sort of semantic information underneath. This is why microformats never really took off. Mm -hmm. It's because nobody wants to use microformats because it's, it's work, yep. and the browsers don't do anything with it. No. And the browsers don't do anything with it because nobody uses them. Right? Chicken and the egg problem. Chicken and the egg story. So this is the way, by having actual use cases where people get real user value out of it, that we sort of stop, we, we break that cycle, and we actually start moving towards a semantically marked up world. Okay. So where can we get the Ubiquiti suites? So if you just do an internet search for Ubiquiti, um, you can download it right now, being used by around 400,000 people. You can also just go to labs.mozilla.com. You'll find okay. it right there. Thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed the conference.